and welcome to the Shankly Gates podcast. My name is Grace, and this week I'm joined by Kieran and Dan. Hi, boys. Hi, guys. Hi. Right. We're going to obviously recap on the game against Crystal Palace. We're going to look ahead to Norwich in midweek, and we're going to preview the game against Brentford at the weekend. But first, Liverpool beat Crystal Palace for the ninth time. So, what did we think? We'll start with you, Kieran. Yeah, uh, I can't complain too much, can you? 3 0 home win, clean sheet. Um, yeah, I mean, for long periods of the game, it, it, you know, it wasn't comfortable. Certainly at 1 0, sitting, sitting in the crowd there, the longer that game went on, thinking, you know, we need to put this, you know, we need to put this one to bed. Um, you know, we know how dangerous Palace were. They had the moments in the game. And uh, we were sparing, you know, a few chances. You know, the Jota won in the first half, and, you know, Guaita was making a few good saves. But in the end, you know, with the. Um, with the help of three corners, we, uh, you know, we got ourselves over the line. You know, another big three points for us, and uh, yeah, I can't complain too much. Kieran mentioned obviously scoring from corners. Dan, do you think Liverpool have improved at scoring from set pieces recently? Yeah, definitely improved. That's definitely the right word because when it didn't really dawn on me at the time, it just felt like three goals because they weren't exactly you know three towering headers. But when I seen the stats on just how many goals we had scored from corners, I thought, wow, that's a change. Because it got to a point, I don't know what you guys think, in the past sort of 24 months, whereby I thought, unless Van Dijk was in the box, I thought we've got absolutely no chance of doing anything from this corner. So, yeah, it's good. You know, the more ways you can, you know, break teams down and score goals, in particular against sides that sit deep, if you can score goals from corners against them, then that's happy days. So, yeah, another weapon, um, and it's good news. So obviously Mane got his hundredth goal for Liverpool. Um, we've all been asked to pick our favourite Mane goal. So I'll start us off. Mine is from 2016 when Mane scored a 90th minute winner to win us the derby at Goodison Park. Yeah, it was probably one of his most simplest finishes. Storage hit the post and then Mane put it in. But I think in terms of winning a derby, there's no better feeling than when you win a derby away as well. So yeah, that's mine. Kieran, watch yours. I mean, yeah, just to touch on that, the absolute scenes there in the OAM, by the way. Oh. <laughs> um, for me, yeah, um, not probably not one of the most important goals, but for me, my favourite goal, um, 2019, a routine home win over Watford. And, um, you know, he gets the, you know, he gets the ball in front in front of him, is back to goal. And to me, it, it's the sort of goal that, for me, some Sadio Mane up. I, lo- I, lo- I love the fact he's an instinct player. For me, I'd I'd rather him have just make it a, you know an instinct choice and not have too much time on the ball. You know, his his backs his backs the goal. You don't I don't know what he's gonna do next. All of a sudden he pulls out this world of a back heel, you know, from absolutely nowhere, flies past Ben Foster, he's not expecting it, no one is. And you know, I just you know, I just stood stood there and all because for me that's a perfect type money goal. I see it loads of times, you know, maybe he's through on goal and now he has too much time on the ball and doesn't make the right choice, but that sort of that 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 instinct that that class for me that mm. that's definitely my favourite Mane goal. Much yours, Dan. Yeah, mine comes from um, January of 2018-19, and um, the game against Manchester City at home. Um, the four three, it was an absolute basketball match. I think we all probably remember the game. It was a phenomenal game of footy, and it was about the sort of time our rivalry with Man City in terms of us both being the giants of the Premier League really started to materialise. Um, and he made it 3-1 in an absolute chaotic, like I say, chaotic 20 minutes worth of footy. Um, and it was a stunner. Left foot, which is wrong foot, obviously, as we know. Edge of the box, absolute arrow into the top corner. Um, I was behind it as well as in the Annie Road for that, that game. So that made it a little bit sweeter, a little bit personal. But yeah, you know, like Kieran says, instinct player. And when he does have time, he almost does make a mess of things occasionally, but we can forgive him that, I think. But just want to mention as well, while we're on it, I did consider the goal against Norwich away when he brought the ball down from the sky. Um, and there's a similar one in Bayern Munich um, away as well, which is obviously yeah. really important. And I've also got to mention Dave's because he's not here and he should have been with us. Um, he <laughs> picked the winner against Aston Villa away, the little flick header at the near post. So, yeah, he's not a bad player all in all. I think recently he's faced a lot of criticism for like not finding the back of the net as much as what he used to. Do you think he silenced those critics? What are they called? 
Do you think he silenced them this weekend, Dom? Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think he silenced them in the build-up in many ways because he's actually, you know, he found the back of the net against Leeds, even though he did miss a host of chances as well. But a little bit of relief, I think, from all of us when he did score. But there was a lot of talk in the build-up about his 100th goal could come this weekend, like it did. So I think everyone kind of started going, you know what, he's actually been superb. And not only that, his record against Palace is like phenomenal. So everyone was talking about that as well. So even though he has had critics, and rightfully so in many ways, a lot of the talk this week's been really positive. So that, coupled with the goal he gets, I think he's in a better space than he was a few days ago, maybe. Let's just put on the other goals as well. So Salah's goal, Kieran, what did you make of that? Yeah, I mean, it was very much needed. It was a, 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 sort of similar to the Mane goal. Sort of corner comes into the near post area. Um, obviously, the first goal was a Salah flick save. This time, it was Van Dijk, who you know probably doesn't you know make the contact he wants to make. But you know, credit to Salah, that's what he does. Always seems to find himself in the right position. And I mean, many other players with a panic there. You know, um, like the Jota chance in the first half, leant back and powered it over, but. It, that was a Chris Volley right, right past um, um, Guaita, absolutely no chance. Mm. And um, his um, shirt off celebration straight after as well. I'm not sure it was particularly called for there. I understood the United one. I wasn't too sure on you know a a, two, a goal take at two 0 against Palace, but you know, I, you know, if he's scoring goals, I, I can't complain too much, can I? I don't think any fantasy captains would be very pleased about that. <laughs> <laughs> Knocking a couple of points off, even though he'd no. scored. <laughs> what did you make of Cater's goal, Dan? Um, it's an absolute world, isn't it? If we're honest, like, where's that come from? For one, for Naby Cater, like, he has scored. In fairness to him, that's a little bit unfair. He has scored a couple of decent goals. Number one against Chelsea last game of last season when he scored a worldie from sort of not yeah. no, the last game of the season before. Sorry, he's hell a lie. Um, and he scored a worldie that game. But yeah, that came out of nowhere. But, you know, more generally on Cater, we all want to start seeing moments of quality from him, don't we? Like, it's been a long time coming. Um, but yeah, absolute stunning strike. Um, and the celebration wasn't bad either. Although, <laughs> the comparisons with Eric Cantona one, I'm not that pleased <laughs> with, to be honest. But I don't think he meant that, because I'm very surprised if he knew Cantona did that. But yeah, no, great goal. And also, Canate made his debut. What did we make of his debut, Kieran? Yeah, I mean, f- fairly solid. Yeah, it was um, great to see great to see him on the team sheet. We, th- we spoke last week about um, we thought we might see him this week, maybe in the Milan game. But uh, no, he was given the nod against Palace. Um, well, you know, looking at you know looking at the team, he obviously had he was playing on that um, playing on that side with uh, Milner. I, mean, I thought you know, post you know is that you know. Is that the right time to be doing it in the first game if Trent's not in? But you know, yeah, f- fairly solid. You know, won a lot of you know won a lot of battle- battles. Looked um, look f- fairly composed on the ball. I mean, you've got you've got at least he had Van Dyke next to him. I mean, you know, you can't you can't ask for a better sort of centre back partner. There. He's going to talk you through a game. Going to you know lead that back four. So I you know I had a little bit of doubts obviously with Milner on that side, but. I think apart from one time where Jordan Ayew got past him late on in the game, uh, I thought you know I thought he did pretty well and um, a pretty solid debut from him. When I saw him at the start of the game, I thought, oh, he does look nervous. But I think as the game went on, he got into it a bit, didn't he? And like found his confidence. And obviously, it was a complete reshuffle of the back four as well. We lost Trent due to illness, um, and Robbie was on the bench. What did you make of that? And obviously, we kept a clean sheet and scored three goals. So, do you think? That made a massive difference, or yeah. it's difficult to be too critical of it now because all's well that ends well. Like you say, three 0 win, clean sheet. You know, we can't really criticise, but there were hairy moments within that. And Palace, for my liking, <coughs> probably had sort of too many looks at our goal. If I'm going to be honest, I think we recovered quite well. And um, Canate has to recover quite well a few times, but if you're recovering. Like, I always say this about Kyle Walker. Like, everyone raves about his recovery pace. But if you're recovering, that means you've done something wrong in the first place. So, how often do we see Van Dijk recover? Never, really, because he deals with it first time. So, yeah, listen, the back four, you know, clean sheet, did okay. 
And it was, in a way, you know, obviously we've got the three points. That's the main thing. So the fact we've heavily rotated that back four, because we're going to need to rotate this season. Like, we'll come on to the Carabao Cup later. So to rotate that heavily, get away with it, get a clean sheet, is an absolute godsend of a result, like a brilliant result. But do I want to see James Milner at right back every week? Not at all. You know, Simicast, to be fair to him, done really well. Can't argue with that. But James Milner, and I tweeted about it yesterday, I'm 99% certain he's always at right back against Crystal Palace. And that's all that's right, really, yeah. Isn't he, though? Every time he's coming up against I, I, Wilfred I, I, Zaha. I remember, I remember the red against Palace, the 4 3 a couple of years yeah. ago, definitely. Yeah. Always seems to play against them. Right hmm. Maybe yeah, put always. him in, see what happens to you. <laughs> what did you make of the back four, Kevin? Uh, yeah, again, looked at the team, you know, at two o'clock when it came out, you know, I was just surprised. You know, I, I didn't get, you know, w- you know, wind of um, Robertson and uh, Trent being out. So, came was a shock to me. Obviously, we knew Simicash from the first couple of games of the season, what he can do. So, yeah, um, for me, it wasn't, you know, so much the de- the defensive side, and um, it was more, you know, the one thing that I took from that game was not so, you know, how much we do rely on the fullbacks going forward because we have scored three goals from set pieces there. It to me, it didn't seem like, especially at one nil, we were creating an awful lot, and I don't know whether that's due to the fact, you know, we've not got our two starting fullbacks. I mean, I, I went back and looked at the match stats, and you know, to be fair, I, I think I may have been proved wrong. We did have quite a few attempts on target. So, but it just, it just felt like in the game we were struggling to create things. So, I mean, obviously defensively you can't argue clean sheet to clean sheet, but um, I think certainly going forward we're never gonna uh, we're never gonna have it as good as when we've got Trent and Robbo. Yeah, I agree. And I think in recent weeks there's been a lot of talk of well, why doesn't Klopp play Trent in midfield? But then, what as Klopp said, why play him in midfield when he's one of the best right backs? He wouldn't do it. So it's like. It's one of them, isn't it? We know we definitely need him and he provides an attack threat, which we really need. And hopefully he is back midweek because Liverpool face Norwich in the League Cup. Um, what are you thinking on teams, boys? Would you stick with the team that plays the weekend? Would you rotate again? What would you do? Dan, you're shaking your head. I feel like you're not, you're not sticking, are you? Not sticking in the slightest, <laughs> to be honest with you, no. Um, Pretty much regardless of what had gone the week before. But, you know, we're coming into, you know, three games a week territory now, aren't we? Um, plus, it's the Carabao Cup, um, with all due respect. I'd love to go far in one of the domestic cups, if not both of them. I really would. Um, but I'd love to go far in it with this team I'm about to name, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> so, Kelleher, I'd go Kelleher in goal. I think yeah, he's the absolute yeah. shoe in over um, Adrian as number two. Nico Williams, I was quite surprised he didn't mm-hmm. feature yesterday, but I'd give him a go right back. Um, I'd give Canate another run out, to be honest. I think he probably needs it. Um, alongside Nat Phillips, um, we haven't seen him at all this season, but I'd go with him. Um, Simicast again, because I guess we're going to see Robbo at Brentford. And then Milner, Cater and Jones um, as the three in midfield, because Fabinho and Henderson, cotton wool territory for me. Um, and Thiago obviously did his calf. So who knows about him? Um, plus, obviously, Harvey Elliott, this is the sort of game he would have played and starred in, but obviously he can't. Um, and then up front, I've gone with Minamino and Arigi um, with Cade Gordon in Salah's position because, one, I think he's really good and he was brilliant in preseason. And two, I see he didn't play today for the under-23s. So I'm thinking he might be involved on Tuesday for yeah. us. So, yeah, that's my eleven. What about you, Kim? Are you the same? Uh, yeah, I was just speaking of that under-23 game. It did make me laugh. We got beat 4-0 by Leeds, but I saw Pascal Stroik played in the game, which uh, made, <laughs> made me laugh uh, quite a bit. bit of irony there. He's uh, obviously suspended for the first team for what happened to Elliot, so we thought he played in the under-23s. Oh. I know. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, I think he's, I think, yeah, you know, as much as I'd love to have a, you know, a Carabao Cup run, you know, it, it's definitely the time for rotation. We've started the Champions League campaign. Uh, as Dan said, we've got three games a week. So, and to be honest, the side he named, I, you know, maybe, you know, one or two changes from that. Maybe Oxley chamberlain gets a goal, someone like that. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know, one of those. Maybe, you know, he has a look at Canati and maybe think, you know, maybe Joe Gomez instead. Or I, I don't know. But I, I think the basis of the team will be 
those sort of 13, 14 players that will be here. From, well, if it was me, anyway, that's the way I'd go. I mean, the, for the game itself, uh, I, to me, I think Norwich have to play their strongest team. The way the way they've started the season, five games, five losses. Whether they do that or I, if you know, they they, I if I was looking at it from their, their point of view, they need a result. They need to try and get something going, whether it's in a cup or a league. So it wouldn't surprise me if they went quite strong in this game. Whether they do or not, I don't know. I'm not. You know, I'm not Daniel Fark. I don't know what he's got planned, but if it was me, I'd go pretty strong in this one. That's what I was going to say. Do you think Norwich will be well up for it, Dan, or what do you think? I don't know. I, I, Kieran's dead right in what he says, and it really is, you know, toss of a coin. He could go one or two ways with it, Daniel Fark, for me. I think he could do what Kieran says and look to get a bit of momentum going and go strong and try and get a win because they need a win, let's be honest. But at the same time, he could be thinking, if I go strong and get beat by a Liverpool B team, that's even worse for my first team. And he might completely prioritise the league because they they, they need to start doing something in the league. Otherwise, they're gone by Christmas at this rate. So, (laughs) yeah, yeah, I think he could go one of two ways. And from our point of view, I hope he absolutely bins off the Carabao Cup and says, we're not going to win it. We're not good enough to win it. So, play the kids. And, you know, that that should mean that this side that we name, whatever it may be, is strong enough. Because, like I said earlier, I want to go far. I just don't want our first team to have to do it. I think for us, the early stages of the League Cup are well out with match fitness. It's like getting Canate in match fit, getting a more green time. Same with Origi, although... Oh, for me, Origi's just on his way out, but whatever. Um, I feel like we just need to use it to our advantage to rotate our squad fully, better players we need to best, but also give people who don't usually get a start to start, which people argue with them that you don't take the cup seriously when you do that. But I think for a team like us it's necessary in order to do well elsewhere. I think that's what we need to do. Um go on then what are your predictions? What do you think are happen? Kaden we'll start with you. Uh I'd I'd say I'd, it would depend on I think the team. I think you know uh, I think it was if it did knowledge go first same I think you know it could be a very tight game I think you know we've still got the quality there to beat them so I think it'd be if if it's the first day I think you know it might be quite tight maybe a 2-1 or maybe even go straight to penalties I'm just you know there's no extra time so it's penalties. level so I think that if not I think if it's B team against B team essentially I do I think we do run out quite comfortable winners I'm just glad it's a Norwich guy I don't expect it to be a physical one so you know it's quite kind of a nice game for us what do you think then yeah, um, similar to Kieran, um, but I have predicted a few more goals, um, to be honest with you, just because I'm almost going on the assumption it's going to be B team against B team, um, which makes me think it'll be quite sort of not attacking, but you know, the levels of quality might not be as high, which might lead to more goals in terms of defensively. Um, but yeah, I've gone with 3 2 Liverpool, I've gone for just to edge it. Um, looking at the likes of Origi, really. Um, to step up. I know you mentioned him sort of on his way out, which is what I've been going on about for about six months. But um, do you know what? I was impressed the other night against Milan. I was. I think he did all right. Um, and if you can kick on from there and, you know, be the man in this cup that you should be, you know, amongst this team, you should be one of the leading stars. So, yeah, Origi to shine and Liverpool to win 3-2. Very positive. I was speaking to people in midweek about Origi and Someone was going on about the fact that they think that Origi is basically like beat star to Origi over one of our front three. And I was like, can I just ask, what can you watch him? Because it's not the same one that I'm watching. He's living on glory and he just, he needs to step up and do something because I can't pretend anymore. Like, yeah, he needs the match fitness from the Carabao Cup, doesn't he? Definitely. Mm. Because he needs to prove himself. Yeah, well, yeah, all right, he does all things, but it's like, he needs constant. But, yeah. Oh, Klopp came out in a week, didn't he? And he was talking about, um, you know, having receiving no offers for him and that people, you know, just weren't watching at all. Which, you know, I think, you know, it's good having confidence in your own players and, you know, backing them and that. But, you know, th- I think there's a reason why there was no offers that came in, yeah, again, to be honest. <laughs> I think if they weren't watching, we might have had an offer or two, to be honest with you. <laughs> which is really harsh. That is real, yeah. But it is very true. It is, especially like... like- Last season, especially. Let's be honest, he was woeful when he was used last season, wasn't he? 
I feel like final balls, we get, you know, we've got too much momentum, we break through the fences, and then it gets to him, and it's like, oh, it's a goal kick. Like, I just <laughs> can't, don't score anymore, I can't do it to be so <laughs> So hopefully he actually proves us wrong in the green. If he does, then I'll be back to confess that I'm sorry, you really, but you know, you proved me wrong. Um, so also, we play Brentford next weekend, um, they beat Wolves this weekend. Um, what do we think about Brentford, Dan? Difficult. Yeah, really difficult, to be honest with you. I've been impressed since they came up. Um, Well-organised side. You know, last season, they were quite free-flowing in the Championship. And I thought, if they continue that, one, it'll be difficult to do in the Premier League. And two, I fancy Liverpool, you know, to, to take six points off them. But having watched them in the early weeks, they have gone a bit more pragmatic in their approach. So I think it'll be a difficult game. And um, they've got a genuine goal for it in Ivan Tony. Uh, so yeah, not easy. Having said that, do I think we'll have too much for them? Yeah, of course I do. I think I expect us to go to all the newly promoted teams and pick up points. So confident, obviously, but I do think it'll be a tough game because they've started really quite impressively. And um, the only thing I would say on that is Liverpool come into Brentford and to any of these sides that we talk about, they don't expect to pick up points. It's like a, a bonus if they can even pick up a point from this sort of fixture. So they target, you know, the teams around them more, and rightfully so, you know, to try and stay in the division. So that's one half positive I take from these sort of games. Not that they'll be relaxed or not up for it, but it's not a game they prioritise because realistically they're going to get outclassed. So that's kind of what I expect. And you mentioned Ivan Tony, he scored two at the weekend. Kieran, do you think he'll be a threat for us? Uh, yeah, I do. I, th- um, I, th- I, you know, he started the season quite well. I mean, I think we have to respect any, you know, you know, any any forward that we come up against. You know, spe- especially that he's just, he's, you know, a proven goal scorer in the championship the last few seasons, which uh, you, you can't argue, you can't argue against that. But you know, we'll have you know we'll have to be on our guard. The, um, I, um, the players will be up for it. The fans will be right up for this. I, you know, this is. I'm really looking forward to this. This is, you know, going to be a proper game. I saw the only game I've seen at Brentford was the opening game against Arsenal. You know, under the lights, the fans were properly right behind them, and they you know, they're a decent, decent football team for me. The um, which I do think can play into our hands as well. Um, you know, I think. Uh, the way you know the, the way they play in the style the style they play as well. If they want to come forward and attack us, you know, bring it on. We've you know um, we've got just got to try and you know nullify the link between you know we've got the likes of Embuemo and Tony up up there up top. You know they would you know they you know they will be a threat. They'll have the chances. Every team will get you know carve open a few chances against us this season. So if we can you know guard against that, limit the damage. I you know fully expect us to uh, you know hit them on the break. Especially if they go with um, the core, you know, the system they have at corners, which you know I saw earlier on in the season where they have all all ten outfield players um, up for the corner. Which if they do that against us, absolutely bring it on, lads. <laughs> there's there's no way they do that against us. I'm sorry, you, you're dead right to put it out, but that would be absolute insanity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would be actual madness. I think. I would back Brentford to stay up more than I'd back Norwich to stay up, if I'm being honest. Oh, 100%, so, yeah. do you think people in the Premier League underestimated Brentford at the start of the season? Um, yeah. Possibly, yeah. So, possibly. Um, it's difficult to know with a side that's literally never been in the Premier League. They've been knocking on the door for a few years. Um, and I love the Championship. I think it's a brilliant league, to be honest with you. So... You know, they've kind of been there and thereabouts. And like I said earlier, they play football the right way. And they've they've got this whole club-wide model that's very different to everyone else in terms of it's similar to ours in many ways, except on a lower scale in terms of the money ball sort of system. We use like the top end where we try and cherry pick the best players who've come through that rank, whereas they kind of buy these players to sell. Like for years, they were selling like Neil Mope and Ollie Watkins and people like that. Now they've actually got into the Premier League themselves and fair play to them for doing it. And they also got rid of the under-23s and became a B-side. So they're really quite revolutionary in what they've done. Um, So it's difficult to know um, what a side that's never been in the top flight is going to be like. But like I say, they've been a good... They haven't just 
got promoted by luck. They didn't just get through the playoffs and suddenly they were there. They've been there and thereabouts for a while. So if you did underestimate them, anyone, then that's probably a bit unfair because I think in Thomas Frank, the manager, who's been there for years as assistant and now actual manager, you've got a proper decent guy in charge and they look like a very well-run football club. Do you think they'll stay up, in? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, I do. Um, I mean, it's like I, I look at you know the last two, I certainly lead, like a Leeds last season and Sheffield United the season before. I think you know coming back up to the league for the in their case, it's first time in a while and Brentford first time you know ever for the Premier League. So you know it's that breath of fresh air that um, you know the teams you know we haven't played against them before that you know trying to work them out over you know trying to work them out over um, the first season they'll pick they'll pick up a lot of points like you saw against Wolves at the weekend you know you know watching the highlights there I thought they were fantastic they've been great in other games as well so I think this for me from what based on what I've seen so far and uh, they should be you know they should well get the 40 points needed I think what do you think the score will be Dan? Um <sighs> 2-1, Liverpool, something like that. Um, I don't think it's going to be a, a walk in the park whatsoever. I think they'll make life difficult. I think the fact is that their place makes life harder for obvious reasons. Um, if this was at Anfield, I'd probably be much more confident. But at the same time, I do predict a relatively comfortable 2-1 if there is such a thing. Um, maybe they score late on or maybe they go 1-0 up and it panics us and we just cruise past them at that point. I don't know, but yeah, 2-1. What do you think, Kim? Yeah, I, I think every, every time I predict, I always predict us to concede, and we never do. So, carry on. Um, I, 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 I feel a slightly more comfortable, sort of like a Leeds game, like you know, maybe a three nil. I mean, to be honest, all you've got to look, all you've got to do at the minute is look what the Chelsea score is, because whatever they yeah. do, we do. It, it's it's mad. The five games so far this season, Liverpool and Chelsea had these exact same score lines. So, whatever score Chelsea City is, I think it'll be that. Yeah, well, I was going to say, they play City next week as well, so it's a really important weekend for us. And I know, <laughs> yeah. like, that sounds yeah, mad games, so early. Yeah. But yeah, if if we go to Benford and win, like like we should, you know, one of them's dropping points, some or both of them for that matter. So yeah, it's a massive weekend already. Do you think our issue could be that we get complacent? I know that that's happened in the past with us. We go to a side, we think we're going to win, and then obviously we get beat or draw or whatever. Do you think... And that could be a problem at the weekend, Kevin. Um, no, I don't, I don't think so. I think Jürgen will, uh, I he'll get it into them. Um, you just, they just need to look at the um the first few Brentford games. To be honest, um, I'll, I'll, hopefully they'll have a look at them first half. If there's any complacency, Jürgen will have a go with them at half time. Certainly, um, I'd, so I'd, I'd fully expect that I'd expect them not to. I'd, ex, I'd expect them now to be um, you know, realize that crowds are back. You've got to be up for every single game possible, and you can't uh, you can't sit back for any reason whatsoever. What do you think about that, Dan? Yeah, I think you're right to point it out in terms of it's something we've definitely done previously, even in Klopp's early years. I remember, you know, I remember being at a game against Bournemouth for home, and it had that complacency sort of feel to it, and we ended up drawing two two, and it just it felt like the writing was on the wall for a long period in that match, and. That was really frustrating. But it is also something that we've kind of stopped doing um, under Klopp as he's developed this side. And, you know, you look at the likes of Henderson and Van Dijk and those sort of leaders, and they aren't the sort, and even Allison, they aren't the sort of people to allow complacency. Um, so it doesn't concern me anymore. But you're right, because it did concern me for a hell of a long time with us. But even the year we won the league, we were winning games whereby we weren't very good at times. And, and we might have been hanging on to one nil leads, but there was absolutely no complacency about that side whatsoever. So I expect this season side to be exactly the same as that, to be fair. Yeah, I completely agree. I think hopefully we can get the Panthers and take three points. I'm going to say we're going to win 3 1. I think they'll score early and then we'll get one back before half time. And then after half time, we'll score two. That's take that. Thinking. So I could be wrong. I'm usually, I'm usually wrong. So we'll just see what happens. We'll just <laughs> see what happens. Right, so that's all we've got time for this week on the Shanty Gates podcast. Join us again soon for another podcast. See you later.